Hello my friends and welcome to Paulina Art. Today I'm going to be painting this pretty colorful rooster using the multi-load techniques. I'm going to demonstrate step by step how to paint this rooster. I was inspired to do this painting by a photo I found on Pixabay. I'm going to link it on the description box below. If you would like to see how I painted this rooster using the multi-load technique, stay with me and let's paint together. I'm using the Liquitex Basics Acrylic Paint. I'm going to attach a link up here on the screen for the review and swatches I did. Titanium White, Ivory Black, Burnt Amber, Burnt Sienna, Catium Yellow Medium, Alizarin Crimson, Ultramarine Blue, Turquoise Blue. Today I'm working on 10 by 10 canvas which I have already prepared with a coat of white gesso and a drop of black acrylic paint. I have prepared a pattern for this painting. I'm going to attach a link to my Facebook page where you can download this pattern for free. All you have to do is click on the image and save it. I'm going to attach the pattern now to my canvas with some painter's tape so I can trace it on the canvas and the pattern won't move on me. I want to make sure the pattern is well centered and there's equal amount on each side of the rooster and at the top and bottom as well. Okay, I have transferred the pattern and now I'm going to use a fine liner brush with black acrylic paint. I've added some water to the acrylic paint to make it nice and inky. This is going to help me trace the drawing. What I'm doing here is an underpainting and the underpainting is going to help me at this point, I can make corrections if I need to. And by doing an underpainting, I won't lose my original drawing underneath the layers of paint. And it's going to make it easier for me once I start applying colors. I'm now using a small filbert brush a filbert brush is a flat brush with rounded edges. And with this small filbert brush, I'm going to start applying shadows the way I see them on the reference photo. I'm using the same black acrylic paint with some water. And by adding these shadows, it's going to help me when I'm applying the dark colors. This is going to give me a good idea on the contrast between dark and light on this rooster. And I'm adding some of the dark feathers on the tail. Okay, the underpainting is done, so I'm going to start applying the first layers of paint using a round brush. I'm applying the red and for the red color I'm using alizarin crimson. It's a nice dark cool red. For the lighter feathers I'm using burnt sienna. It's a warm, light brown. I'm applying the same color for the shadow part of the feet. I'm 
For the darker feathers, I'm using raw amber, which is a dark, cool brown. Because of the underpainting that I did previously, I can see the darker colors showing through my lighter layers, and that's the effect I wanted. Now I'm going back to the black to add more definition and contrast to the tail feathers. I'm going to use some painter's tape so the horizon line is nice and straight. And I'm using ultramarine blue for this. I think this color is going to look nice with the warm colors that I'm applying on the rooster, the nice warm oranges and brown. And I'm adding a little bit of white as well titanium white, just to add some contrast. And my horizon line is nice and straight. I'm adding some highlights now on the areas that I see on the reference photo. And I mix white, titanium white, with burnt sienna to create this light orangey color for the highlights. I'm going to start applying the second layers of paint and I'm going to be using the Folk Art Floating Medium. This medium will help me to blend the paint and make the paint flow easily on the canvas. I'm also going to be using an angle brush to create the plumage on the rooster. The floating medium is on my palette and I'm dipping the brush and removing the excess. I'm now picking up black on the toe of the brush and burnt amber on the heel. And I'm going to blend these two colors, not over blending them, With the black at the bottom and the brown towards the upper part, I'm flicking my brush and creating the effect of feathers. And I start at the bottom, creating the feathers from the bottom up. This will make the feathers look more natural and the natural overlap the feathers have. And with these two colors, I'm painting the darker feathers. I'm now picking up burnt amber at the toe and burnt sienna at the heel. And I'm going to lightly blend these two colors. I'm also picking up cadmium yellow deep. This is the yellow I'm using. And I'm going over some of the feathers in this area just to add more light, more dimension to the feathers. As I'm painting the feathers, I'm following the shape of the body. I'm now picking up burnt sienna at the toe of the brush and cadmium yellow deep at the heel. I'm also going to add a drop of titanium white just to make the white lighter and more opaque. And with these colors, I'm going to create the lighter feathers that I've mapped 
with a lighter color. And I'm also following the shape of the rooster's neck and overlapping them to create a natural effect. I'm now adding the longer feathers towards the tail and I'm creating longer brush strokes to create the effect of these longer feathers and also curving them a bit to create the shape of the rooster. I now have black at the toe of the brush and ultramarine blue at the heel. And with the black towards the body and the blue towards the outer part, I'm painting the beautiful blue feathers on the rooster's tail. So I'm using longer strokes for these feathers in this area of the body. I'm finishing the large sickle feathers here with long strokes of the brush. Okay, I'm switching to a round brush and I have alizarin crimson with yellow just to add some warmth to these uh, red areas, to the comb, the waddle, just the red areas of the face. And I'm adding some, some of this color on the beak and back of the neck just to add a little bit more color. And also at the top of the feet. Okay, I'm back to my angle brush. I'm picking up ultramarine blue at the toe and turquoise blue at the heel. And I'm blending these two colors. I'm also adding titanium white with the turquoise blue to make the color lighter and more opaque. And now I'm adding the highlights here on these beautiful dark feathers on his tail, the sickle feathers. I now have titanium white at the toe and yellow at the heel. Now I'm going to start adding some highlight on the back of the neck, some lighter feathers to add more dimension and brightness. I continue adding some highlights here on the neck and also on the saddle feathers. And I'm following the shape of the saddle with my brush strokes to create more volume on the rooster's body. And the strokes get shorter as I get close to the top of the body. I'm adding some highlight here on the feet as well. And the same highlight I'm applying on different areas of the face, just to make the face more interesting. I have turquoise blue at the toe and white at the heel of the angle brush. And I'm lightly blending these two colors. And I'm adding highlight 
on these large blue feathers on the tail of the rooster. My second layer of paint is done and I'm moving now to a fine liner brush to do the final details. I have white and I'm adding highlights to different areas of the face, the eye, the beak, just to make the face more interesting. I'm also adding highlights to create the effect of nails on the feet. The final touches really add to a painting. I now have black and I'm enhancing the shadow areas. I'm adding a touch of feathers and defining the shadow areas on the face. I have mixed some alizarin crimson with yellow and I'm adding some highlights on the comb and different parts of the face to make it more translucent, realistic and same on the feet. And now with a small filbert brush I'm adding some shadows. Okay, my friends, the painting is finally done. I decided to add a bit of a brick wall behind the rooster. And to create this wall, I used some white chalk and a ruler. And basically I drew the lines. And then with a round brush and some black and burnt amber and some water, I created a lighter brown and basically I follow the lines I had done and then I created this line. These lines, as you can see, they overlap each other to create the effect of brick. And then I added some white mixed with the burnt amber to add some highlight. And this created the effect of the wall. I feel this finishes the painting. Sorry I didn't record this part, but it was an afterthought. As you can see, using this multi-load technique and all the steps I showed you on this video, the process becomes very easy and you can create a painting like this in a short time. I'm going to give you a close-up of the final painting. you enjoy this video I hope you learn something new if you like this video please give it a like comment below share with your friends and subscribe to my channel if you don't want to miss any future content from me thank you so much for watching I will see you on the next one